Renee Boisevane is a man who is crazy about rocks, so much so that he has dedicated his whole life to them. But not just any rocks. He has a very unique passion. Renee is a collector of crystallised mineral specimens, commonly known as crystals. He has traversed the globe in search of the most unique, the most delicate and, of course, the biggest crystals in the world. This peculiar obsession has developed into a very successful business. His wife Nelica has stood by his side, supporting and facilitating his rock-hounding habit since the early 60s. They were living in rural North Queensland in Walkerman with a young baby and Renee was looking for some adventure. In those years, in the 60s, I didn't know what to do and where to go, uh, apart from working for the farmers for a dollar an hour in those years, and um, uh, picking tobacco and when that was still popular. And then uh, I met someone, uh, with the name of Steve Boykowski, and he said, why don't you come with me to Agate Creek? I said, what is Agate Creek? He said, it's near Foresight. I said, where's Foresight? <laughs> and so um, uh, we went and um, uh, we came to the Agate Fields and they were just, just little nodules, size so, of so potatoes. And we were picking away and, and, and loading it up in bags. I was picking away for agates and I, I think I went like three meters deep and then make steps to get out, out again and uh, just carry the agates and put them on the side and then one moment with the pick I hit an agate and it opened up and there was crystals inside. I was just stunned so I said to Steve who was there, I said look, look at this. I said what do you do with these and uh, he said uh, there are machines that can cut those and then you have to grind them down and then polish it and you can sell that. They've got beautiful colors inside. And so my interest and passion in opening rocks and see what type of crystals are inside, then it started. I said, oh, there must be more in the world. Renee learned how to cut and polish agates and made many more trips to Agate Creek over the years with his growing family. I found one of the largest agates in Agate Creek and I had a hell of a job to carry it. It, it, it was a monster like this and um, I had it on my shoulder and that hurts and then I had it here and I had up the hill and down the hill and eventually I had to do three more hills and I, I was so stuffed and tired that I thought, oh, oh, just push it down down the hill and it, it rolls and then this, if it bursts well that's too bad I was sick and tired of carrying it it survived so on my heels down the hill down the hill down the hill and then I had the power again to go up the next one <laughs> and eventually <laughs> I've got it in the, in the camp and the car and back to Atherton yeah. when he said it was heavy it weighs 49 kilos for years I had the idea to cut the top of it to see whether it's hollow with crystals inside like a geode or it is solid all the way and I still I still don't know why I haven't done it but then again uh, it, you spoil it a little bit you know you, you interfere with nature so anyway yeah it's in the crystal caves it's uh, yeah people can see it and that's the story also and so what began as a weekend camping expedition turned into the beginning of the rest of their lives. Renee started a small shop which many years later became the Crystal Caves in Atherton. He had a longing to learn more about different types of crystallised mineral specimens, rocks and gemstones. He soon learnt that South America was a good source of many different types of crystals. I think my first trip was to Uruguay. And, um, I went into the uh, amethyst mines. That was absolutely amazing. Oh. And there was this guy sitting there and chipping away and uh, taking the geodes out of the rock. You, you need a chisel and a, and, and a hammer, and you need also a pick. And um, 
Yeah, that, that was amazing. Crystallised minerals come in all shapes and colours. Many are endemic to a particular country. All are unique. I still am obsessed with it. it, it you have a crystal formation in your hand. You know, that's amazing. That is so uh, intriguing. It tingles all through you. That's amazing. I've never seen this before. Wow. Well, one of the trips was to go to the geode mines where you find the, you know, the, the spherical uh, geodes. And, um, in those years, there, there was a, a hole in the ground and a rope was hanging down with big knots and there were two Mexicans and they just <laughs> wheeled you down and you come in a, a chamber or do it and from that chamber uh, there was uh, I can't remember I think about four tunnels going you know in and in and every tunnel at the end was a, a Mexican with a chisel and, and a hammer and a pick and he just <laughs> so the tunnel became longer and longer and longer and then he puts them in a bag and drags the bag over the floor uh, back to the main uh, chamber where you come down with that rope. Renee has brought many tons of geodes back from Mexico and today at the Crystal Caves you can experience opening these Mexican geodes for yourself using a specialized tool that cracks them in two halves perfectly you will be the first to see the crystals that formed 44 million years ago. Geodes formed when bubbles became trapped in lava. As the bubbles cool and slowly solidify, water with silica and other minerals becomes trapped inside. This fluid slowly dries and the silica forms into crystals. The highlight of my life were the, uh, the largest crystals in the world, which is in Mexico and it's not open for the public, Naika Cave. And uh, very uh, lucky I knew Hector. Hector was the owner of the geode mines. And he said, yeah, I'll get you in. It was fantastic, it was unbelievable. I don't know whether uh, people can Google it, you know, the Naika Cave. It, uh, no, that was unbelievable. Crystals, you know, this size, you could walk on them. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the highlight in my life, yeah. Renee was not able to get any images of himself inside the caves. The humidity was over 90% and the temperature at 68 degrees Celsius. But here's a fun pic we photoshopped. So Renee has been trampsing all over the world collecting different crystals. When Renee decided he wanted to create a museum to share his growing collection, he didn't want to make a typical natural science museum. Let's face it, there's nothing typical about him being a bit of an eccentric. He wanted visitors to engage and fall in love with the crystals like he had. And since crystals form underground, he decided to build a cave in the back of his shop in the main street of Atherton. Building the caves was yeah, a little bit obsessive. <laughs> People in Atherton, uh, while building the cave, and they come and had a, a short look, and he said, oh, he's extravagant. He's a little bit... Uh... <laughs> I remember that in the, in the morning when I came and a Charlie was there to, waiting for me for the, for the uh, things to, to make and he said, how many metres did you dream? I said, oh, last night I dreamt about six metres. He said, wow, six metres. And he had a team of uh, three or four uh, backpackers and he, he just said, uh, today he said, we're going to make stalactites. So, they had a fence wire and things, and they roll, they rolled it, and then put the hashing over it, and then, you know, with a point on it, like like an ice cream sort of thing, and they attached it to the wall, and we were in a very lucky position that 
the foam that we use to spray it and make it all look very, very realistic. Uh, there was a big truck and it used to do the tobacco sheds inside and they had to spray that first with foam because of the weather conditions. So those guys came and they did the spraying and after that was finished we had a few drinks and when we left uh, Nelicus Suzuki was outside there and I said hey guys just, just give that a good spray so it looks like a rock eye. <laughs> so I still remember that uh, when it was all finished I didn't realize you can't get it off. That's it. But there is no solution or whatever. So I said to Nelica, it was from upstairs, I said, look what we've done to your guy. And Nelica goes, oh, oh no. I said, now we'll get it off again. No way. <laughs> so that became the rock guy, which is outside the crystal cage. <laughs> that rock car got a lot of media attention. Not surprisingly, building a cave was an expensive exercise, but despite some pushback from his wife and three daughters, he was determined. And I remember that uh, Nelica just shook her head, she said, you're going too far. And Cecilia said, don't do it, Dad. And if you're the oldest, you're not all there. And uh, Gislena said, don't do it. And the more they say that, the more... <laughs> In the end, it became a great success. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Gibbs was then Minister of Tourism. He came especially from Brisbane to do the grand opening. And uh, my eldest daughter, Ifia, and her friend, they dressed up like uh, cavemen, and they had these, these bits of wood, and they come out of the cave, and like, rah, 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 and yeah, that was a, was, was a great success. <laughs> you see a family coming out of the caves, and I'm there coincidentally, and they've got a big uh, smile on their face, and they said, who did this? Who, who built that? He said, that's the man over there. Yeah, can we have a picture? <laughs> and it makes you feel fantastic, makes you feel so good. I'm really proud that I did all that uh, 38 years ago or somewhere there. Over the years, the Crystal Caves grew in popularity as tens of thousands of visitors came every year to discover and explore. But of course, Renee wasn't quite done. There would be one more addition to the Crystal Caves and it would be the one that would gain international acclaim. How I got hold of the largest amateur geode in the world. I got an email and it said, Dear Renee, we just discovered the largest geode ever. And I said, oh, wow. I said, can you send me a picture? He said, it's still a bubble. We have to take the face off. So when it was done, they sent me that picture and I was in awe. I could not believe what I saw. And it was 70,000 US. And I said to Nelica, we can buy the biggest amateur geode in the world. And she said, how much? I said, 70,000. Can you speak up? I said, 70,000. US. <laughs> she nearly fainted. She said, just forget it. Just forget it. No, I'm not going for it. So I raced back to the to the, uh, the office and I emailed, I'll have it. <laughs> so I went to the bank and the bank said no. Jesus. So then um, I went to another bank and this guy, he was so nice. And he said, uh, uh, just come to my office. He said, I'm leaving the bank tomorrow. I've done my bit. I've signed you a contract that you can have. <laughs> the geode is immense. It's so beautiful. So it arrived and there was television and there was radio and newspapers and magazines and whatever. And that big crate, huge crate, it dangled 
that out there and they, uh, they opened the, the roof of the building where it was going to be because it was so big you, you couldn't do it any other way. I didn't want to see the unpacking so when it was unpacked they said come Renee, come and have a look. And it was there and I was just nearly too faint. It's so beautiful and it still is. <laughs> So when it arrived, it, 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 it was even more impressive when they unpacked it and all of it. And yeah, and that was fantastic. It was a great moment in my life. Whoever, whether it's my own family or visitors who see, they, they all in awe. They just can't believe that, that that formed deep underground. I think everyone has it picture taken in front of it. And, yeah. <laughs> the massive amethyst in the Crystal Caves in Atherton has been featured in magazines, educational books and virtual collections all over the world. It was even a question on American Jeopardy. A further 600 specimens are on display in the Crystal Caves. Some of the more delicate specimens are behind glass, but many are free to be touched. And this is what makes a visit to the Crystal Caves so unique. Explore and engage with crystals from all over the world on a self-guided tour and share in Renee's passion for crystallised mineral specimens.